guys welcome to my youtube channel this is dr ann matthew here thank you a lot for subscribing to my channel for liking sharing and viewing it it really means a lot to me i appreciate it um today we are going to discuss something interesting it's about the ear care in dogs and cats uh, which will also include the ear diseases the clinical science diagnosis and treatment protocol we also have a surgical management that's going to be coming up uh, which will be led by dr sulekha singh she's my colleague and she's also from the madras veterinary college tanwas uh so before i move on to our topic today uh there were some questions that i got on my instagram dm which i wanted to discuss with you guys um so i'll move i'll move forward with it really quick uh the first question was uh can chlorine in swimming pools cause my dog allergies basically skin allergies um so yes uh, to an extent yeah but but it might cause a little of itching that's all uh the basic point of the swimming pool uh, causing skin allergies would be if the ph is not leveled and if the swimming pool is controlled by you like if you're owning it and stuff like that you always know what ph it is it's about 7.2 to 7.8 shouldn't go more than that because the normal skin ph of the dog is 7 so you just need to keep that in mind that's uh, all resolved uh, going forward to the second question uh could you please tell me some home remedies to avoid skin allergies in our pets um so home remedies um we could go for oatmeal natural shampoos that you get uh, in case if you're searching for bathing products uh turmeric could be used to an extent uh, on open wounds um if if that is the most um, available easily available um a uh, product that you can use uh, and also apple cider vinegar to an extent also can help um with uh, severe skin itches and skin problems but uh, always make sure that when you're applying the apple cider vinegar uh, it should not be applied on broken skin you just have to pay attention to that uh coming forward to the next question uh my dog is severely itching uh i'm unable to travel to a vet at the moment so could you please help me out uh first and foremost uh you need to look at my earlier video which was discussing all about uh skin allergies uh there are different allergy testings that you need to do you need to rule out what is causing this allergy and uh how this allergy has occurred what really uh, caused it you need to find out all of that rule it out so first and foremost that is very important <laughs> but then uh, other than that um you could use calamine lotion uh, calamine lotion to an extent uh, decreases the severity of itching but make sure that your dog always wears a cone so that um you know it doesn't lick the calamine lotion cuz slightly poisonous uh so yeah that's all about the questions that i got uh, i received from uh, the previous um, youtube channel uh, the previous youtube video that uh, i had done Uh so today we are going to discuss about uh the ear care in dogs and cats and uh, without any further delay I don't want to give it a whole lot of introduction because everybody knows what a ear is what a ear infection is uh, I'll move on to the structure of the ear before I start with the ear infection and diseases So the structure of the ear goes like this so there's the outer ear uh that the outer ear is called the flap of the ear and then you move forward inside to two canals that is the ventral canal and then following the horizontal canal and then you reach down to the middle ear before that you find the tympanic membrane and after the middle ear you find the inner ear and on top of the inner ear you'll find auditory ossicles uh so these these are the structure of the ear is just uh, generally just to like you know give an introduction about um, the ear care in dogs and cats now cleaning your dog's ears and cat is not a really difficult job it's a very simple job and i would advise all you pet owners to um give a little more of um you know care and concern uh, regarding the ear cleaning management in your dogs uh you don't really need any special um equipment to uh, clean your dog and cat's ears it's essential for both the dog and cats uh, both as they develop a lot of wax build up in their ears it could cause a lot of uh, severe infections so uh, i would suggest you all guys to please take care of the ear um, because the ear infections could be uh, something that could first primarily start and it could develop into something else later you might not know what's really happening inside your dog and cat then Uh so moving forward uh a good quality ear cleaning solution uh, which is a ear cleanser basically a uh, few cotton balls and gauze is all that you need 
uh, also um, if you have a little of dog treats or cat treats would do because um, you know after you clean your dog and cats ears always feed them the treats so they'll be like you know i did a good job at least they'll be happy about it so yeah you can you can keep some dog treats and cat treats as well while you're doing this so that they actually um, allow you to do it uh so now uh i want to give you one basic tip please note this down when uh you're trying to clean your dog and cat's ears make sure that you do not use q tips or earbuds the ones that we use to clean our ears please do not use that because you might end up poking the your drum inside too deep and uh, hurting the outer and inner part of the ear causing trauma and bleeding internally which you will not know and you will not realize it so do not use a q tip or a earbud uh that's one of the advice uh so when it comes to cats uh cats usually um they don't really need too much of your cleaning because uh they preen themselves really well they groom up themselves very well so it's not necessary necessary but uh make sure that once in a while you check your cat's ears just lift it up and check whether there is any wax build up to find out if there's any dirt because they tend to get more of the ear mite infections and uh, dogs on the other hand get ear infections more commonly than uh the cats um so yeah uh moving forward uh i would want to talk about what really causes this infection in cats and dogs so uh first um i will name this down i'll simplify it down for you simplify it down for you uh, so first there could be overgrowth of any bacteria and yeast um second there would be excess of wax build up um third um any skin allergies or pollen food allergies could also cause uh, ear infections uh fourth there could be autoimmune disease diseases or disorders that could cause it uh five there could be tumors or polyps that could cause the ear infection um six uh, any wound or bruises that you know could come up somewhere it could lead to hematoma uh which is where the blood vessels actually break up and you know there'll be swelling of the ear and that is really really painful so that's six um seven uh, if not proper cleaning is done uh it could also cause uh, ear infections uh and uh, foreign bodies also could cause ear infections and last but not the least it's ear mites so these are the different uh eight or nine um causes that would uh, cause severe severe ear infections um so as i said ear cleaning is really important please keep that as a, a protocol whenever you take your dogs and cats for grooming make sure that this is a step uh when your when the groomers are cleaning up your dog or cutting your hair or cutting their hair and grooming them make sure that the ears are also cleaned as well so just make that as a part of your grooming schedule uh moving forward uh now that we have known what causes this ear infection we need to know what are the signs of the ear infections so what are the signs that we see first and foremost you would find a foul smell or a strong odor uh there'd be severe itching um there would also be some dirt particles that you'd find there too much of waxy build up that will be there that will be excessively itchy 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 or uh, you could hear some squishy sounds as well sometimes um there could be bleeding there could be pus discharge or any kind of other discharge the discharges could be yellow black coffee colored or blood um other than that there could be a uh, hearing loss and as well as disorientation and balance uh balance fall so yeah uh, when it comes to the hearing loss uh, balance fall and you know the disorientation in the body and stuff like that when when these these things happen tilting and circling it's all severe severe conditions of the ear that means your dog has all, or your cat has been already suffering from some ear infection and it has just disorientated and disintegrated into something really bigger than what it usually is So now um these are the clinical signs of the ear diseases and ear infections moving forward we want to know what are the diseases now what are the names of these diseases that actually come up right so first and foremost there's something called otitis externa which means um the inflammation of the external ear canal is called the otitis externa you also have subdivisions of it of otitis otitis externa otitis media and otitis interna they all have different um definitions but it basically inflammation of the external ear the middle ear and the internal ear so that is about the diseases and last but not the least we also have something called oral hematoma where the blood vessels of the outer flap of the ear break up and what happens is it swells up and there'll be severe pain your dog will experience and it will be always uh, moving to one side or tilting its head to one side either the left or the right it could happen on both the ears as well so you need to pay really attention to about that 
uh, moving forward to the diagnosis so how do we diagnose uh, the your uh, diseases and your infections very simple you need to know the history well the owner is the one who has to give the history so you need to find out whether when was the last time you cleaned his or her ears when was the time that you uh, took him out or took her out and you know uh, through indirectly transmitted through any other dogs you need to know all the history so basically uh, the owner needs to give a proper history a uh, very important uh, later the clinical signs that is what the vet's job is to do find out what are the clinical signs and what really he seen or she seen through internally through the dog and cat's ears you can also use the otoscope that's what the vet uses it's an instrument where you find out internally what really is happening so through an otoscope you can actually find out uh, the different um, if there is any type of bulge or swelling or tumors or polyps uh, you could also find out if there's bleeding there's any discharge uh so the otoscope helps us to helps us vets to see and notice what really is happening internally there uh then we also have an oral cytology where uh, there'll be this long uh, swab or like structure you put it inside deeply and take out whatever the pus and discharge if it's present and then you put it on the glass slide and screen it and then after that you can actually find out if there's any ear mites or any other bacterial yeast infection or pseudomonas infection or anything it could be So that is how we do the oral cytology and last but not the least we also have a microscopical examination um that is merely to find out about uh, the ear mites um we also have something where the culture plays a major role so uh, always take cultures of the dogs and cats ears as well uh, just to find out if there's excessive of yeasts and uh, other bacterial uh, fungal cultures uh, that is present inside the infections that is present inside the dog and cats ears um visualizing uh, with excess of good experience by a wet is also essential when it comes to the dogs and ears cat dog and cats ears infection uh, because that also plays a major role so that's up that comes with the diagnosis uh moving forward to the treatment protocol so uh to the treatment protocol uh, your cleaning most in session most essential is the ear cleaning that's number 1 uh, the doc will give you some ointments uh, topically applied or internally applied you need to find out how to use it the uh, maintain the protocol and put it on a, a good period and a good interval do not forget about it uh, always apply cotton balls inside or cause pieces of cotton into the ears when you're taking them for a shower or for a grooming session or you're bathing them by yourself uh just make sure that the moisture does not get in so because moisture also can cause your infections too much an excess of moisture uh as well as when you're taking them for swimming as well uh you can also put cotton balls inside so that the water too much doesn't go into the middle ear and the internal ear uh after the bathing is done or after the topical applicants are applied make sure that you take um a swab or um not a swab basically a gauze or a cotton a uh, piece and just right wipe out the outer corner of the ear so that doesn't remain moist uh so yeah that's that's the ointments it's basically this is the medical management of uh, your infections uh moving forward to uh, a little more depth uh when it comes to otitis media and otitis interna uh to an extent we follow surgical procedures and management where uh the surgical procedure is basically to remove and drain out the fluid or exudative material that is present inside there uh if anything that is causing the pro- proliferating otitis uh we uh, wets make sure that the surgical management is done um so now there could be contraindications as well as indications that will all be discussed by dr sulekha singh uh from mbc she will be helping you out and um, aiding you with the surgical management and the surgical pr- protocol for otitis uh, and your infections in general um so um that's up with the treatment protocol and uh, i just wanted to tell you some of the ear cleaning um uh, cleansers that you can use the ear cleaning solutions now the ear washes your flushes and ear cleansers are all three different from each other you need to find out which one your doctor is prescribing you to um so when it comes to the ear cleaning solutions we have uh, um Himalayan products of Himalayan Edina they have good ear cleaning solution good ear cleansers we have Verback uh, companies uh, also um, ear cleaning solution uh, which is called the Epiotic uh, ear cleanser and we also have uh, finally um, the Nature Wet ear cleansers as well they're pretty good so these are the three ear cleansers that we mostly use and that I know so yeah you can use these three and um recover your dog from your 
uh, your infections that are affecting you. Always also make sure that uh, the your cleaning solutions that you're taking does not contain any kind of hydrogen peroxide or any kind of alcohol at the base of it. Uh, so that's all about the ear infections today. Uh, I appreciate your patience for listening to me. And uh, so yeah, thank you again. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, uh, share, like, and comment on the video, and let me know what you think about the ear infections in general. Because this was a very general topic. I did not go too much in de into depth about it. Uh, wait and watch um, for the next videos that are coming up. That would be mostly about uh, surgical procedures and surgical management by Dr. Suleika Singh. Stay tuned. Ciao.